pills, as contents, sub supplements, copiousness, multitude. What? Multitude. Multitude. Now, give me multitude in your Hebrew. Give me the number. 4393. 4393 in the Hebrew for multitude. Read. Fullness. All along. All that is. Therein. Fill. That were whereof was full. Fullness. To the fullness, blindness in part have happened to the Gentiles and to Israel. And to the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So let's see who the fullness of the Gentiles that have to come in. To take away this blindness. Go to Genesis 48 and 19. Start at 17. 48 and 17. I need you to hold Romans 11. Right? You got that right there. Genesis 48. And start at 17. Genesis. Chapter 48 verse 17. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim. It displeased him. And he held up his father's hand. To remove it from Ephraim's head. Unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father. Not so my father. For this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly, his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. His seed shall become a multitude of nations. Now we know that Ephraim was over the ten tribes. Multitude breaks down in the Hebrew to fullness. Same word. Nations in the Hebrew and in the Greek breaks down to Gentiles. So when you read Romans 11 and 25, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits. But blindness in part is happened to Israel. He's talking about the ten tribes that left in 721. Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Until those tribes come back to the Father. That's what Paul was breaking down. So in order for him to have this gospel go out throughout the four corners of the earth. To allow this to be fulfilled. All nations had to be taught throughout the earth. To fulfill this prophecy to bring back the 12 tribes that will be a light to the world. Y'all see that mystery? Mm -hmm. Now read the next verse. Verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved. Not just the southern kingdom. But the tribes that left also. That's what Paul is showing here. Not just Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Because those are the tribes that was there. During the time of Paul. So he's saying listen. Not just you Judah. Not just you Benjamin. All Israel shall be saved. All 12 tribes. You with me? Read. Romans 11 and 26. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written. There shall come out of Zion a deliverer. And shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. See that? So he's showing the fall of Israel and the rise of Israel. That's what Paul was showing in Romans the 11th chapter. He was showing how Israel fell and through Israel fall, the Gentiles received salvation, power, and glory within the earth. And that there would come a time where those that didn't believe would begin to believe again and be grafted back in into their own tree. You see that? Why? Because the words that the Most High made to Abraham from the beginning. Read it. 27. Verse 27. For this is my covenant unto them. He made that covenant to them before they were born. 
So the church's teachings on Israel and the Gentiles are totally false. When you go into Paul's writings and understand Paul's writings, he was given total understanding on the fall and rise of Israel. And also showing that we cannot boast or go against the Gentiles who are looking to serve the Most High also. We can't put our burdens on them and they can't boast against us and say that we are not the people. Read. For this is my covenant unto them. Read. When I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. He says, for concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. Talking to, to, talking to the Gentiles. Read. But as touching the election. But as touching those that who are the elect of the Most High. Read. They are beloved for the Father's sake. But they are beloved for the Father's sake. So Israel is enemies to the Gentiles. But they are beloved by the Father. So what happens when the Gentiles set up institutions and teach the Bible? They teach being an enemy to Israel, but yet they use Israel's book. Go ahead. Verse 29 throws off the uh, Christian teaching that Israel is done away with. It says, for the gifts and calling of the Most High are without repentance. Yes, the Most High do not repent when it comes to his calling. He will not take back his covenant that he made with Abraham. The Most High do not have to repent of his calling. Y'all see this? You would, you would rarely see Christians at all teach this chapter. Because how can they teach this? And teach the Israelites, Israelites have done away with. My question to those that try to bring up the fact that Israel has done away with, even out there teaching. We go straight to Romans 11, and I'll ask the question. Can the Most High, can the Most High graft back his people if they believe in Christ? Can they? Can his people come back if they believe in Christ? And they have to answer it. They have to answer it. Because if that's the case, that means they can be grafted into the olive tree, right? Yes. Now, if the people that were in the olive tree decide not to believe and boast against the natural branches, can they be kicked out? <laughs> yes. So, if there was stipulation with God's people, and and th they being a wild olive tree was grafted in, they was grafted in with stipulation. If we had rules, they got to follow rules too. That's fair. That we, the Gentiles, are grafted into the Jewish nation. That's how they use that scripture. And so that we, the Gentiles, are the ones that are grafted in. Yeah. He ain't trying to say that we are the Gentiles draft, grafted in. See, but by them actually saying that, that's the boast against the natural branches. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You have to realize the new covenant is a continuation of the old covenant. It's an agreement. It's a continuation of the original covenant. We broke it so that the Most High had to make a new way so that we can receive the promises again. Period. It's a continuation. The Most High didn't just start with the new book. Hold on. Y'all got that? Mm -hmm. A moment. 
So y'all got that. Finish reading. Verse, uh, verse 30. For as ye in times past have not believed the Most High, yet now have... Read, read, that, read that verse again. Romans chapter 11, verse 30. For as ye in times past have not believed the Most High, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. He says, at one time you Gentiles did not believe the Most High, but now you have a chance through, your, uh, through their unbelief. You mean to tell me the natural people will not get this same chance? Israelites, the children of, 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 of the Israelites that fell will not get this chance to believe in Christ? Or we must do this as Gentiles? Is that the stipulation? So Paul is bringing all scenarios to the forefront so that it's without question. Read. Verse 31. Even so, have these now also not believed, that through your mercy they also might attempt, excuse me, may obtain mercy. It says, even so have these, talking about the Israelites, also now have not believed, that through your mercy they also may obtain, obtain mercy. So he's telling the Gentiles, through your mercy, the Israelites can receive mercy. But the problem is, when the Gentile institutions were established, they had no mercy on the people. They started teaching a doctrine that were against God's people. Read. Verse 32. For the Most High have concluded them, all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. O the depth of the riches of both wisdom and knowledge of the Most High! How unsearchable are his judgments, and his ways past finding out! The Most High ways are way past finding out. Read. Verse 34. For who have known the mind of the Most High? Or who have been his counselor? Or who have first given to him? And it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him, and through him, and to him are all things. To whom be glory forever. Amen. So that's crystal clear. I hope you all understand the teachings of not boasting against the natural branches, the Gentiles, and the Israelites. And these were the arguments that Paul was dealing with within the church. Some people might uh, misunderstand Paul's writings because he says in different chapters about... Um, about not being under the law. But that argument was stipulated off of certain circumstances that was happening at, at that time in the church. You had Jews like, in, like the Nicolaitans coming in the church trying to force the old covenant on Gentiles. And Paul was saying, listen, they haven't even learned Christ yet. And you're trying to put, him, put them under the things that Christ made them free from. The penalties of Moses. If the Israelites couldn't keep these commandments, how can you force this on the Gentiles? Let them find Christ first, and they will by nature follow the laws of Moses. That's common sense. Don't teach them backwards so they can have the same fall of our people. And see, if you don't understand this, you'll think that Paul was just saying, do away with the law of Moses. He wasn't. That wasn't the argument. But you had people coming into the church strictly to look and see who was breaking the, and upholding the laws of Moses. And that became their driving force to put the church back under the bondage Christ made us free from. That became their driving force. And Paul was like, no, we're not going for it. We're going to go Christ first, then Moses. We're not going Moses first, then Christ. Mm -hmm. We're not going that way. And because Paul did it this way, more people...